Just a little known fact about the Hito Hito no Mi model Daibutsu, it actually allows its user to see through all the riffraff of the world and goes on to show them the true path to enlightenment. Which funnily enough, is to subscribe to the Grand Line Review for regular One Piece content uploaded straight to your YouTube feed. And wow, oh, what an oddly specific thing to do. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today for the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, we will be taking a look at yet another super special entry, being the Hito Hito no Mi model Daibutsu. The Hito Hito no Mi model Daibutsu is a mythical Zoan type that allows its user to transform into an awe-inspiring golden giant Buddha, as well as very potentially, but as of yet unconfirmed, a human Buddha hybrid form. This fruit was consumed in the series by former Fleet Admiral and current Inspector General Sengoku, and was brought to our enlightened attention during the Marine for Dark. The fruit takes its name from some beginner level Japanese, with the family of fruit Hito simply meaning human, a phrase we've encountered before with Chopper's Hito Hito no Mi, which is just the basic human model. But in this case, we also have model Daibutsu, Daibutsu being the term used to refer to, well, a giant golden Buddha. And as such, rather reasonably, Viz have elected to translate it as the human human fruit model Buddha. Now jumping straight into things, human human you say? Hmm, well, that sounds mighty familiar to another very famous fruit in the series. And what I want to actually dispel right off the bat is any notion that the Hito Hito no Mi model Daibutsu is related to the basic Hito Hito no Mi that was consumed by Tony Tony Chopper. The internet is a dark and bizarre place, and more often than I'd like to admit, I see the argument being thrown around that the result of the Hito Hito no Mi model Daibutsu is simply what would happen if a human consumed Chopper's fruit due to the whole enlightenment misnomer. Which first of all, yes, I do have to say this every time, Oda has never stated that a human consuming the Hito Hito no Mi would be granted enlightenment. And if you'd like to know exactly why that's wrong, then check out this video, link in the description. And furthermore, even if he had, the Hito Hito no Mi model Daibutsu is an entirely different fruit and not to be conflated with choppers. Now with the standard disclaimer stuff out of the way, this is the second mythical zone that we have examined in the series and the first to bring a human into the realm of beasts, allowing its user the instant ability to become this deity-like figure, complete with superhuman strength and a funky shockwave style ability to boot. It's also interesting to note that the shape of the eventual transformation does skew the human form a fair bit by emphasizing the upper body and granting a comparatively teeny tiny lower body. Kind of like what would have happened if Buddha neglected leg day for his entire existence. With that said, I should note that there is no guarantee that what we're exploring here is in fact the full beast transformation allowed by the fruit. It is entirely possible that what we've seen is the human beast hybrid form and so like weirdly balanced limbs. And I mean, it's really tricky to tell when you have a human essentially transforming into another sort of human, but in any case, it's a sizable transformation to say the least, basically allowing a standard human to become a giant at will. And actually with that thought in mind, who knows what kind of effect it would have on a giant that consumed the fruit, as I imagine that it would be scaled up from their base body. And rather adorably, I also imagine that if a dwarf were to eat it, then you'd end up with what would probably be a standard golden Buddha statue. You know, the ones that adorn all the Thai restaurants. But whatever race you are, this fruit is going to have the immediate benefit of amplifying your strength significantly, likely simply due to the mass of your new, assumedly metallic form. There is an added bonus though, which I mentioned briefly before, being that the user also gains the ability to conjure devastating shockwaves, the likes of which can probably be compared to those spawned by the Gura Gura no Mi, just on a much more condensed and targeted scale. Although the Gura Gura no Mi can do that as well. So the immediate benefits are most certainly combat focused and seem to favor those who enjoy a bit of the old punchy punchy. And speaking of said users, I'm not actually sure if Sengoku would be put in that category, but he has certainly made exceptional waves using the abilities of this fruit, managing to rise all the way up the rank of the Marines to Fleet Admiral and commanding the entirety of the organization. Plus it also gave him his epithet being Sengoku the Buddha. However, it would be a gross injustice to say that the Hito Hito no Mi model Daibutsu is the only thing or even the primary factor responsible for Sengoku's success as his crowning feature is his tactical and analytical skills. In fact, an argument could be made that such a heavily combat focused fruit is a poor match for Sengoku, as he more often than not does not have the opportunity to use it on the front lines. And in regards to that, the series has made it very clear that Sengoku rarely invokes the fruit's powers, as when he did finally unleash them during the Paramount War, even his own Marines took note of the fact that they had never seen this happen before. But I would be remiss not to mention that being able to access the attributes of an enlightened deity may play some or even the majority of the role in regards to Sengoku's tactical prowess. At face value, it would make perfect sense if Sengoku's mind was effectively upgraded by consuming this fruit, allowing him to think far beyond his natural human limits and thus rising to the notorious tactical mastermind that he is known as in the series. The only evidence we have of this so far though isn't really evidence at all, but in One Piece Burning Blood, the Hito Hito no Mi model Daibutsu is said to be a fruit that bestows its user with the abilities of a superhuman, going on to mention both a giant body as well as a superlative brain. Very intriguing indeed, but once again, we can't take Burning Blood's word for it. I will 
say that it is awfully suspicious that the most intelligent individual within the entire series just so happens to be a bit of a Buddha. But hey, it might just be a cute thematic addition by Oda. Into the Awakening section now, and I know I've been saying this a lot lately, but given the top tier combatants we've been dealing with, it just keeps ringing true. It's entirely possible that the Hito Hito no Mi model Daibutsu has already been awakened in the series, and that's why Sengoku was able to change into a super big dude bro. I mean, despite the fact that Daibutsu is clearly in the name of the fruit, it may be a case of the base form of this fruit changing the user into, you know, a slightly bigger than normal golden version of themselves. I feel like this is a very simple and boring answer though. Instead, I think it would be far more intriguing if this, of all fruits, did not subscribe to a standard Zoan Awakening, and instead had a more profound effect, kind of like that of Buddha himself. For example, perhaps an awakening of this fruit allows you to spread a sense of enlightenment to those around you and craft a legion of super thinkers. Or maybe much more selfishly, the awakening of this fruit will lead its user to true enlightenment and allow them to effectively transcend all human limitations of this world. Or better yet, given that the major aspect of Buddhism is the rebirth doctrine, aka reincarnation, then perhaps the awakening of this fruit would not result in an immediately noticeable benefit and act more like the Yomi Yomi no Mi possessed by Brook. Although instead of your soul returning to the world of the living and selecting a vessel, it immediately reincarnates incarnates the user into a new vessel to begin a completely new life. All of which may be completely based on the karma of the person in question in correlation to the six realms of reincarnation, according to Buddhism, that I have only just learned about for the sake of this video. So for example, someone who has led a primarily selfless life may even be granted the ability to reincarnate into a more heavenly realm, while someone who is a complete dick might be thrust into the existence of an animal or even a hellish realm, should such things even exist in one piece that is. And then someone who lands in the middle could come straight back to humanity. No matter what the case though, awakening this beast, if it is indeed possible, is more than likely going to result in life-changing and world-shaping power. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming a deity human. The Hito Hito no Mi model Daibutsu may be the source of some of the craziest power this world has ever seen, but it is also home to the world's most mild side effect, which is that upon transforming into the beast or human beast hybrid form, whichever it is, the user's clothing is also manipulated into a form that the fruit deems acceptable. And in the case of Sengoku, his transformation results in his upper body uniform being tied around his waist. Also of minor note is that in the anime, Sengoku's hat is shown falling off during the transformation sequence but no such thing occurs in the manga, meaning that it may be entirely possible that the hat vanishes as part of the ability mentioned above. I mean, it's highly, highly unlikely, but technically possible, I guess. So this is just a warning because if you're a hat person, then this may be a big red flag for you. In the end though, the Hito Hito no Mi model Daibutsu is a mythical Zoan fruit, and on that basis alone, it is absurdly powerful and 100% worth consuming. The only issue I can see is the ambiguity of how much this fruit would assist the day-to-day -day person. I mean, becoming a giant golden Buddha might have a decent amount of utility, although I think it would mainly involve lifting heavy things or faster than normal travel by foot. But there is every chance that the true benefit of this fruit is entirely in the effect it may have on your mind. And if that is indeed the case, then this is a no-brainer, unless you actually have no brain, in which case, sorry. But then again, knowing the answer to that question might even come to defeat the theme of the fruit and its particular focus on faith. So as a result, you're probably going to need to take a leap of faith when it comes to consuming this one. At worst, you'll become a golden giant. At best, you may come to achieve a sense of enlightenment unlike anything your fellow humans could ever dream of. And with that, we are going to commit the Hito Hito no Mi model Daibutsu to the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. Next time on the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, we are jumping straight into the post time skip period to our next named fruit in the series, which just so happens to be a swampy logia by the name of the Numa Numa no Mi. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but applied to other anime manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenanigans retakes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Hito Hito no Mi Model Daibutsu. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time. I would love to do YouTube, kind of like what you do, but more opinionated and looking into themes and such. Anyway, do you have any advice on how to start it? By the way, I love your channel. All right, firstly, thank you. And I do have several key bits of advice. The first of which is start immediately. YouTube is a long, long haul, and it's going to take you a disgusting amount of time to develop your content. 
In my case, I would consider the first 100 videos I made in the really dark days of horrible writing, audio quality and editing to be god awful, but you do need to go through that period to discover your own style and effective working methods. Secondly, don't make content that everyone else is making. You need to differentiate yourself somehow. So for example, my strategy is to make easily digestible and coherent chunks of information or opinions, whereas many of my peers would go for a longer discussion reformat. So it doesn't have to be a big difference, but find a difference. And once you've found that content, discover a way that you, in whatever situation you're in, can make that consistently. Whether it's once a week, twice a week or more, consistency is the key to everything. The algorithm does not favor an erratic uploader, nor do subscribed audiences. Also, seriously temper your expectations of success. In my first year with the Grand Line Review, I gained a total of 500 subscribers, and I was pretty thrilled with that. And I'd also definitely say don't go into it with the expectation to make money. Becoming monetized on YouTube is, oh, oh it's, a, it's a long and painful experience. So if that's always on your mind, you are almost guaranteed to get frustrated and give up. Do it for the love of making videos and see where that takes you. Next up, invest in good equipment early. It took me far longer than I'd like to admit to get a microphone that produced anywhere near tolerable audio quality, and it makes all the difference. The Rode Podcaster, for example, is a fairly reasonably priced USB mic, and a lot of people use Blue Yetis as well, although I have no personal experience with the latter. But just get one, consider it a hobby investment, and just do it because if your videos involve recording audio, then I can guarantee you you're not getting anywhere without one. And start learning software. Find some Photoshop tutorials that give you the basic skills to make decent thumbnails. And of course, some editing software that isn't like Windows Movie Maker or iMovie. I personally use Final Cut Pro, but Adobe Premiere is also well worth a look. And finally, just try to have fun. Making videos can be a great experience, but it can also be a horribly painful endeavor, especially when you aim to have high level output. So pick a topic that you are insanely passionate about and just go. Do it immediately, do it consistently, and do it for the fun of it. And of course, let me know how it goes.